Let's see here. Good morning. I'm Dr. Joyce Van Hook, and I will be your moderator for this class. Today is Thursday, November 17th, 2022. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, the United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenora Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, an original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body, Joshua. Joshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8, 5, that there are lords and gods many. But we now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is the title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or in select encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. 
This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, his self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, entitled Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the New Earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We will open this morning's class with a prayer given by Dr. Mariah Coleman of Lansing, Michigan, a song by Jack, Dr. Jackie McCain of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Our scripture this morning is John, the 13th chapter, and that will be read by Dr. Edna Mixon of Detroit, Michigan. Our readers for today are Dr. Didario Warren of Detroit, Michigan, and Dr. Marie Winters of Arkport, New York. May we have our prayer. Good morning, brethren. Let us all bow our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer. And we want to thank you, Yahshua, for delivering to us your name and your purpose and pattern and plan of salvation and letting us be one with you so we can know more about you in spirit and in truth. And we're thankful for the trials that you have us go through so that we can 
come closer to you and so that we can call on your name. And with that, I like to say hallelujah. 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 Praise Joshua. Good morning, brethren. Good morning. To Yah be the glory, great things he had done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for its sin and open the light gates that all may go in. Praise our way, praise our way, let the earth hear his voice. Praise our way, praise our way, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father. Through Yahshua the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of Yah, the vileless offender who truly believes. The moment from Yahshua a pardon receive. Great thing he have taught us. Excuse me. Great things he have taught us. Great things he have done. And great our rejoicing that Yahshua the Son, but her and higher and greater will be our wonder our savior in yashua will be praise away praise away let the earth hear his voice praise away praise away let the people rejoice oh come to the father through yashua the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Praise away, praise away, let the earth hear his voice. Praise away, praise away, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Yahshua, the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yahweh. Dr. Mixon. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading today, John the 13th chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revived by A. B. Trana, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated in the 1983rd edition. That is John, 13, found on page 143. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that the hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the adversary having now put into the heart of Judah Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Yahshua, knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from Yahweh and went to Yahweh, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Rabbi, dost thou wash my feet? Yahshua answered and said unto him, What I do thou knoweth not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Eighth verse. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yahshua answered him, If I wash thee not, thou shalt have no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Rabbi, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yahshua saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet. Let me read that again. Yahshua saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and rabbi and ye shall, you and ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your rabbi and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verse 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his master, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now, I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Yahshua had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now, there was leaning on Yahshua's bosom one of his disciples, whom Yahshua loved. Simon Peter, therefore, beckoned to him that he should ask, who it should be of him, he spake. He then, lying on Yahshua's breast, said unto him, Rabbi, who is it? Yahshua answered, He it is, to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judah Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Yahshua unto him, What thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. 29th verse. For some of them thought, because Judah had the bag, that Yahshua had said unto him, By those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sock, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Yahshua said, 
Now is the son of man glorified and Yahweh is glorified in him. If Yahweh be glorified in him, Yahweh shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. 33rd verse. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one to another. By this shall all know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Rabbi, whither goest thou? Yahshua answered him, whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. 37 verse. Peter said unto him, Rabbi, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Yahshua answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. I had just read for you John, the 13th chapter. May we all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. We thank everybody for their participation. And um, I have been advised by Dr. Allen that after Saturday's class, we will be returning to class again on Tuesday, the 29th of November. I will now turn this class over to Dr. Lenore Allen. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm glad North, South, East, and West. Um, morning, morning, evening, and afternoon, we're meeting together in order to find out more about our Heavenly Father. And I wanted to invite people, if they wanted to, to um, get into the scripture reading, and then we're going to finish reading the um, transcript. And Dr. Kidley had been talking about washing their feet, and that's what we were reading here. And uh, he talks about, let me see. Uh, can you start reading from the beginning again, 13 and 1? Can somebody read that? I will. Uh, that's John 13 and 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that the hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them until the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judah Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Yahshua, knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from Yahweh and went to Yahweh, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured the water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Mm -hmm. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Rabbi, doest thou wash my feet? Well, I just, to, I just wanted to mm -hmm. call attention to the fact that he got himself a towel, he wrapped himself up, um, he lowers himself, he humbles himself, and he um, began to wash the disciples' feet. And the, the thing that Im impressed me, he, when he came in, he talks about that he said that he did not come to be ministered to, but he came to minister. So he is physically washing their feet. He is physically humbling himself and doing the work of a servant. And you can see all the way back under the law, Moses had to wash the priest's 
in order to for them to be able to officiate in the temple uh the the prophets when they came along they had to minister to the people and dr kinley talked about that we should bend over backwards in order to help somebody to understand and there were times that when the prophets came in uh they came in humbly sometimes they were they were tortured they were ridiculed they were put to death but they were doing the work of yahweh which is um just to make a, a little offshoot here when they had the talk the other day the seminar that they had in lansing um uh, about how satan's house is divided and they were talking about how uh the pope would send out people to take back Jerusalem by force. And you can read in the book that um, Joshua, Joshua doesn't come with a sword and that he's, he's, um, the weapons of his warfare are not carnal. So he's, com he's coming as a, he's coming as an aide, he's coming as a helper, he's coming as your minister. And you can even pick that up with Joshua the Messiah, how in the book, it talks about that Yahweh is the author and the finisher. Yahshua, the son of Nun, comes in and institutes that law. And then Yahshua, the Savior, comes in and fulfills it. And I just wanted to get um, Galatians, the second chapter. Uh, no, Galatians 6 and 2. Galatians. Galatians 6 and 2. There you oh, you know, uh, excuse me. Could you pick it up at 1, please? Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So you you um, see a man's overtaken in a fault and that you who have, don't have that fault, you who are spiritual are supposed to restore them or encourage them in the spirit of meekness because you got to think about your own shortcomings. And it just reminds you of a, a time that I, I had somebody in the class who was, um, always late perpetually late and i didn't say anything because if i said something i knew i was going to be nasty so i i didn't say anything but i'm saying but i was thinking like, why are they always late why are they late? and we even went to a seminar and so we were in a hotel and they were even late going to class um from the hotel you know just getting in the elevator come downstairs how are you going to be late so i you know i would get all i would get all riled up about it but i didn't say anything and then I noticed that, um, and it was a good thing that, I, you know, it was a good thing that I just shut up because I wasn't going to be nice. And I noticed that all of a sudden they started coming on time or even early. And I said, well, what happened? And they said, Yahshua spoke to me. <laughs> so it was, it's, it's so, if you, so the, the point that I'm trying to make, it says, resource such a one in the spirit of weakness considering thyself so in that situation i was thinking of myself i was saying you are not the one to say anything lest thou also be tempted and i was or tested and i was glad that yashua took care of the situation because i was not the man for the job so can you read two please yes bear ye one another's burden and so fulfill the law of yashua the messiah so it says, bear you one another's burdens. And I'm thinking about um, how when Moses comes down from the mount, let me see if I can get this. Moses comes down from the mount and he sees that they're all dancing around this, uh, this golden calf. He is very upset and he just throws down this, um, he, he throws down the, the tables of stone and Yahweh makes them take this thing, put it in water and drink it. And many people get corrected. Many people 
die that day because they told them, well, whose side are you on? Well, I want to stay with this and then they get killed. But the point is that bear ye one another's burdens. You can see it all the way back here that Moses says, take my name out of the book of life. So he's just pouring his, he just laying his life down for the brethren. And, and um, I was talking to Michael Colucci and he said that he had read that Dr. Kinley had talked about just bend over backwards to help somebody. And, and you know, you do. Somebody says, you know, I, I'd love to come, but you know, I, uh, my car's not working. Oh, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> You try to make it so that people can make it. So it's talking about bearing one another's burdens. And I'm just trying to to pick this up where Yahshua humbled himself for the brethren. So basically, that's all I have to say. Does anybody else have anything else to say? Actually, I, I could add a little bit. Now, now, Yahshua first had to go to John to be baptized himself. Okay, and that actually correlates to Moses washing the priest's feet before they're going to enter into the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it's we were baptized into the cloud and in the sea by Moses going through into the wilderness, and we were all supposed to become a kingdom of priests, you know, mm -hmm. or they were. Right. I mean, we, we now, it's the same way. But see, now, when Yahshua actually washes the disciples' feet. See, when Nadab and Abihu died, Aaron mm -hmm. was the one that ended up consecrating his next two sons to be in the priest's office. So now if you go to Hebrews 4, I think it's around 13, 14, or 15 about Yahshua is the high priest. So... Uh, you said Hebrews 4? The fourth chapter, somewhere I think in the teens. Oh, you see, well, we, okay. yeah, 14. For well, we 14. have not an high priest, 14. 14, yeah, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahshua, the son of Yahweh. Let us hold fast our profession. See, so the thing is, he's talking about. Being the high priest, Yahshua had to wash the disciples' feet because they were to be the low priests of the new covenant. Hmm. Okay. So, and, and then when he says, you no, know, it's a principle of washing their souls or cleansing their souls. And um, so now we ought to do the same thing for others. And now under the new covenant, we know it's the doctrine that does the cleaning. And that goes into, if you want to, um, it, it's actually in numbers. See, it, and it's kind of worded funny. See, Moses Moses did the, the Aaron and his first two sons. But then if you go into numbers third, it, it's, it's worded a little bit weird because it's talking about his first two sons' death. But it, um, yeah, let me see it up there. Numbers three? Numbers, not Deuteronomy. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, man. Numbers, numbers, the third chapter? Yeah, I want to see where it is. Okay, yeah, now it says um, in the, uh, Numbers three, three. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests, which were anointed whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. But yeah, you go you go up. He starts naming the, the, the four sons. And then these are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests, which were anointed, whom he consecrated. See, so Aaron ended up consecrated. And then if you go on to four, he starts talking about Nadab and Abihu died. And the next two sons he had to minister. Aaron is the one that consecrated them. Okay. It, it, it's like I said, I had to read it several times, but it says in three how Aaron, he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. Yeah, the Aaronite priesthood. Uh huh. And in Nadab and Adai, Bayou died before Yahweh when they were offered strange fire before Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. 
and Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. So it was Eleazar and Ithamar that Aaron had consecrated. Okay, so, so Yahshua, being the high priest of our profession, had to wash those uh, the low priests. And those were the initial ones that he sent out. And he says, therefore, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. And in Deuteronomy 32, you got um, starting at one. Talking about Deuteronomy 32 1. Let me see. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on the side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea. It's not 32. 32 1, right? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought you said 1. 32 1. Okay. You said 32 1. Okay, I got you. Give air, O you heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the dew, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of Yahweh, ascribe you greatness unto our Elohim. See, he, now these are the, these are the preaching. See, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, and my speech shall distill as the dew. And the distillation process is a purification process. It's a washing. It's a cleansing. See, so through our preaching is where how the cleansing is coming. And it ends up transpiring. So once we preach to others, they also are cleansed and become a priest also. Whoa. See, there's no big eyes or little use. It says under Jeremiah, I think it's 31, 35. He says, they shall all know me from the least to the greatest of them. It's because we're to become a kingdom of priests. So mm -hmm. we cleanse the other one's soul the way he washed their feet cleansing the other people's soul and now they become as us spreading what they were given onto others to cleanse others and if you go actually into the isaiah 55 and it's around 10 the rain part isaiah 55 oh yeah that's my favorite one uh, 55. Isaiah 55. It's going to be around the, the rain part 10. Yes. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth. And make it, it bring forth and ball, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. I wish I had your good memory. <laughs> okay, all right. See, so now the thing is, now it's going to come and water at the work, and it's going to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower. So yes. now, aren't, aren't we made from the dust of the earth? Yes. So, so the thing is, this rain is going to come down or our doctrine is going to be like planting seeds in the earth plane. You should read 11 too. Yeah, yeah, I was going. I just wanted to hit that seed to the sower. See, so now we're planting with this doctrine, we're planting seeds also in the earth. Hmm. And, and, you know, in the bread to the eater, Man does not live by bread only, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. Okay, so 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sit it. See, so that's it. So, so shall my word. He's talking about the preaching. That's what's going to go forth and 
distill or purify. And it's also going to give these precious little gem, gems that we are taught we could pass on to others. And then we'll just end up with Galatians 5, 22. See, now it's talking about bringing forth and bud. So we're talking about bearing fruit. Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, goodness faith. Keep on going, 23. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no penalty. Okay, see, I, I needed the meekness because I'm bringing it right back around to what Lenore was saying. Mm -hmm. Now, when we become priests, we're going to be delivering this onto people with meekness. These are the fruits of the spirit, love, joy. So when we deliver it, it's because of that love that's in us, that joy, that peace, that meekness. And we want others to uh, have what we have. So we got to deliver the same thing that we received onto others for them to receive it also. And then we'll, there, once you receive that Holy Spirit, you do know him. So, you know, it says, thou shalt just get to Jeremiah 31, 35, because it's talking about the new covenant that he's going to make. And Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah. Here, this said Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. I, I'm sorry, I missed it by one. It's 34, I think I need. Okay, don't be sorry. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them until the greatest of them, said Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. See, this one, when, when see, we teach people in order to believe, because once you believe, that's in Ephesians, I think that after you believe, then you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right. And see, once you receive that Holy Spirit of promise, you don't need folks to teach you anymore. You got inside you what you need to know <laughs> Yahweh. And, and yes, we keep on spreading the gospel and teaching them in the, in the sense of, you know, how uh, uh, to the law and to the testimony, through the creation, through the tabernacle pattern, we, we go to show them how Yahweh set the thing up. So mm -hmm. they themselves now also, they could do their own research. They could look into the law and the prophets. They could look at the tabernacle. They could look at the creation. And that spirit within them it starts clicking things. I, I mean, this one girl I taught, you, you know, that I was trying to uh, teach and stuff. And then once after a couple of times, she started rolling. My garden, I plant a seed. And this this was her doing it on her own. And you know, when I plant them, they're in rows, like line upon line, line upon mm. line. See, and she started doing that. That's not the things I told her. That's different little things she started popping out with. See, he could teach you right within yourself. But you, you have to know Yahweh's words, they're the ones that's going to be able to clean you up from all your filthiness, all your idols, and all that carnal minded stuff, the fleshly thoughts you had prior. So that's, that's it. But yeah, oh, well, the main point was John the 13th chapter. And like I said, he was the high priest and he had to initiate his low priest to, to begin in the new confident. All right, now I'm done. I like that. Okay, any, anyone else? Yes, Dr. Allen. Good day, family. Uh, appreciate what everyone else has said. Um, John 13 is really loaded with a lot of golden nuggets, I like to say. Um, if someone can start reading verse one, and just as uh, Dr. Winters mentioned, um, you know, they have that commentary, disciples speak, 
you know, but we know that the Messiah came to fulfill and, and that's what's happening in this chapter. He's fulfilling. So we see, and we know, you know, when I know, I should speak for myself, I know um, that coming to class, the, you know, to understand the scriptures, first of all, understand what the scriptures are. And it's not the New Testament, <clears throat> it's not the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, that's a biography. And, and, and I looked into that to prove it. And, and so the scriptures that the Messiah spoke of during the time he walked the earth plane was written by Moses. Well, Moses wrote the first five books, they say, but it's through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the 34 books that follow the testimonies, the prophets, Psalms, and so forth, draw out from what Moses wrote. So if we can read first John 5 and 39 for those who are newer, you know, this is where we, I know I was given instructions and proving where to start reading or where to start looking, you know. In the, John 5, 39? John 5 and 39, please. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Right. So the scriptures, as was just said, is not the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that, that there are people out there saying that's what they should be teaching. You know, and I've been to some um, homeless shelters helping people, and they require them to have um, meetings. They require those that they're helping to sit under a false doctrine. I know this personally because I've seen it, you know, and, and, and I've spoken to the ministers there, you know, and I've shared, you know, this gospel that, their, their understanding is it comes out of nothing. I said, no, you know, the creator is not nothing, you know. And so we go in, and it was a pleasant uh, fellowship, but they still, you know, <laughs> still do what they did. Um, so let's go to where we understand how the Messiah is fulfilling, you know, this washing of feet that I know before coming to class, I thought was like water baptism and tithing and all those other things was necessary to obtain salvation but it's not this comes in in leviticus chapter 8 verse 6 where the messiah and everything's given to the messiah spoken in this chapter all things including satan himself okay so he knows he's not out of control nothing there's nothing out of him or out of control so in leviticus chapter 8 verse 6 we're going to see how Moses presents Aaron and his sons. Leviticus 8 and 6 says, And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. Can we get the Moses chart, please, Lenore? Let's get the Moses chart so we can see, because they're not uh, uh, backdrops, as I've been listening to Dr. Kenley. They're not to be backdrops. I was just listening to an interview with Dr. Freddie Allen and Beverly Allen, and, and, that, and that's really profound. Um, they're not to be used as backdrops, but we are to understand that at the time there were concerns. They wanted to see what Dr. Canley saw. They wanted to see the vision, and he said, here it is. You know, these charts are pictorial illustrations that he labored in love to draw out so we can see that here this chart is a migratory pattern, you know, and it starts here off, well, we won't say it starts, it's right, it actually starts in heaven, where we see that uh, the priesthood, okay, um, was instituted with Moses, you know, back here when they were in uh, the wilderness of Sinai. Uh, the law was given only to the Israelites, not to any, and we'll go into that scripture, um, you know, where we can see, uh, it's just, we can go into um, Exodus 12 and 43. But before we get that scripture, let's look, and yeah, we can get zoom in on this uh, pattern. We want to take a look at the fact that the moderation speaks of three compartments, which is the most holy place, holy place and court roundabout. And it is at the door you see this brazen altar of labor, which is one of the three uh, vessels here, primary vessels in the court roundabout. You have the brazen altar for sin sacrifice. You have the brazen labor, 
that contains water for, and it points to what Yahshua is fulfilling. And you have the holy, the cup of holy anointing oil. So here, you know, Moses in this, in this verse, Leviticus 8 and 3, if you could reread that again to Dario. You said Leviticus 8 and 3? 8 and 6. Leviticus 8 and 6. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. Okay. And this is this is what and no, let's go, let's keep the chart up, Lenore, please. And this is where this is happening in the tabernacle is at the door, which is the fourth step. So you have in this tabernacle pattern, you have three vessels in this court roundabout, the brazen altar, the brazen labor, which contains water, the brazen altar is where people brought their sacrifices for remission of their sin. And then you have the cup of anointing oil, which anoints the priest to officiate in the next compartment, which is the holy place. Here in the holy place, you have your seven, your golden seven branch lampstand. You have your table of shoe bread and you have your golden altar of incense, which points to light, bread and intercession that the Messiah is to fulfill. Then you have in the most holy place, a three in one configuration of the Ark of the Covenant with the two archangels, one on either side, overshadowing the mercy seat. So here at the door, which is the fourth step, you see here, is where the, the there where Moses washed Aaron's and his son's feet to, to officiate in this tabernacle. And when we go back to John 13, let's go back to John 13 and read that first verse again, please. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world until the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them until the end. So when we go back to the Moses chart, we'll see where the Passover was instituted. And we know since being in class, who the true Passover is in this current, in this present age of grace. We have here where we see in the lower part of this chart, it's very, you know, blackish like you have um, the, the, the third image from the left. Um, if you can zoom into that, Lenore, that would be great. So we see a lot more detail. The Passover feast being performed and it was given only to the Israelites. So let's read that verse that I called earlier, Exodus chapter 12, verse 43 through 47. So we want to I'm see where the Passover feast is happening on this chart. You said 43? Yeah. 43 or 47? I said Exodus chapter 12, verse 43 through 47. Okay. And Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat up thereof, but every man servant that is brought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth out of the flesh abroad out of the house. Neither shall you break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And all the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And, and we're taught in this class, it was never given to the Gentiles. It was only given to the Israelites. We have it here in the scripture proving that. And we see it on the chart that Dr. Kenley wrote, our founder, who claimed to have a divine vision and revelation, and to, he said to make him prove it. You know, and that's our responsibility you know, as we enter class, not just to take someone's word for something, but to review, to go back over. And the Holy Spirit, and someone, and I think Marie mentioned it, you know, that you know, he says, take time out you know, from all the noise and the bustle and the hustle and all that jazz. And, and, and in my case, he wakes me up at sometimes 3.30, 4 in the morning. And for that hour, it's all quiet. You know, my dog's asleep. And he leads me into read, 
you know, in this case, I'm reading the 1960 edition, the 61, um, you know, God, the archetype original pattern, you know, and studying uh, at this time, the dispensation in Asia's chart, you know, if we can pull that up, it points to where we are in time because it does mention, you know, that um, about an hour, you know. So if we look at the dispensation chart, there are seven, dispensa seven dispensations and seven ages. We need to see that so we can see from top to bottom how this was drawn out. This chart is called the creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. So we see this fiery cloud around this chart as we, as we hear the moderation speaks of it, that we abide within Yahweh. Nothing, ex nothing <laughs> coexists with him. Nothing is outside him. Nothing is outside his control. And we see this vision pictorialized on this chart. In the top portion of this chart, we see you know, that each section has a, an age, a first age called the creative, the second age called the anti, not anti, but A-N-T-E, Diluvian age, which is before the post-Diluvian age. The third age is the post-Diluvian age after the flood. We see the fourth age, the present kingdom age, you know, the age of grace where the Holy Spirit is poured out, which is where we are now. And then we see from there, there's a fifth, sixth, and seventh age to come. Now, in this dispensation, which is an ordering of events, we see it starts here in the second age, you know, where Adam is a degenerated and he, know, and he knows Yahweh's purpose, plan, and plan. So, you know, he's not making any mistakes, right? It was, it was Eve that he willingly sacrificed himself for, his bride in principle, and it's what the Messiah has done you know, when he in this in John 13 talks about his hours come. So we, let's go to John 13. And you can pull up that scripture, Lenore. John 13. You want to get that, Marie, or you want me to get it? Whatever. Or Edna, uh, if you got it, read it. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, we, can start with verse, we can start with verse one again, because it's good to repeat. I know in our class here, um, I'm encouraged to repeat, you know, because okay. sometimes the first time something may fly over, oh, I heard it, but, you know, it, it, hasn't died, it didn't get swallowed or it didn't get digested. You are so right about that. <laughs> right. Hallelujah so, to that. We need to keep, keep this up. Right. So, we, so let's go to verse one again. And here it talks about the Passover. So we can picturalize that vision on that chart where that Passover feast is saving the children of Israel and was only given to the children of Israel, you know, so that by following Yahweh's instructions, they are saved. So read that verse, please. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that the hour was come, mm -hmm. that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them until the end. So let's go to the Moses chart because it brings up also a principle of predestination. And if we look at the Moses chart, we'll see how Moses was brought up to the top of Mount Sinai and he is given a vision of Yahshua, or Elohim, which is Yahweh, and which is Yahshua. There is a one spirit, no two spirits in the body, manifesting himself to Moses. And showing that, and then you see the tabernacle pattern that he transfigures into, showing that he operates by a pattern, which we spoke of, you know, just recently. And then he transferred in part, back, well, not in part, because he's not in part, but he transferred to himself and brought out, you know, brings out, creates, you know, the, the creation, which we read in Genesis. So we understand, and everything is still, we see everything is abiding in this cloud. There's nothing outside the cloud. So when the scripture reads that, the, that, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, right? Having loved his own which were in the world. So we understand that we all came out by him and we're all returning unto him. 
you know, and, and that's a basic understanding of predestination. Now, when we return, it's going to be either in a state of damnation or a state of glorification, you know, and, and that can be, you know, looked at more so as, as we attend classes. So let's go back to John 13, where the supper is being ended. Now, the, the chart I need is the, um, is the old court, old ordinances ending at the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and nailed to the cross. And supper being ended, the devil having known put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, standing firm to betray him. Okay, pause here, the Daryl, and someone can get where Moses' heart was hardened. So we see, yeah, it's just, it's just so beautiful. Let's go to, um, where is Moses' heart hardened? Um, Exodus 9 and 12. You mean Pharaoh's heart? I'm sorry, yes, Pharaoh. Thank you, I misspoke. That's okay. Exodus. <laughs> go ahead. Go. Exodus 9 and 12. And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as Yahweh had spoken unto Moses. So we understand who's controlling things. And when he says, All things have been given to Yahshua, he says, All things the Father has given unto me. You know, we understand that, you know, Pharaoh's heart is also under the always purpose, pattern, and plan. You know, and so there's no, there's no reason to marvel when he does things that, that's like, wow, <laughs> you know, no need to marvel at it once we understand the scriptures and see that from the beginning with Moses, you know, this beast man of sin, um, and we can get the Daniel chart to see that vision, you know, that this beast man of sin, you know, has been slithering you know, through this, the ages and dispensations we see here, let's go to Egypt right there, you know, that this beast man is sin, and we see pictorialized with Babylon, the Medes of Persia, the Grecians, you know, we see it here with uh, pagan Rome and half of Rome, and, and we see it more so now with Russia, you know, that, that their house is divided, that's why they, they fall, they, you know, one conquers another, he meets in Persian conquers Babylon, Greek, you know, the Grecians conquer Medes and Persian and, and so forth. You know, their house is divided and it cannot stand. So we go back to John 13. And we see that the Passover was only given to the Israelites. That we understand the institution of foot washing was to Moses when Moses washed Aaron and his son's feet. And we look at Matthew 5 and 17. And you can get the um the, the, the um new the carnal ordinance ended and the new covenant established. If you get that chart, Lenore, while they get Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Okay, five minutes. Okay. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophecy. And the, I'm sorry, or the prophet, I am not come to destroy, but to defend. Mm -hmm. And we see that's the purpose. We see it when we look at this vision on this chart, how uh, all these carnal ordinances, C-A-R-N-A-L, which means fleshly, not mm -hmm. cardinal, as some people say, and I used to make the mistake in saying, you know, carnal ordinances is a fleshly work. And, 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 the, and the grace that we're in in this age points to how he's writing. And so we get 31 and 31 real quick, Jeremiah 31, 31, um, how he's writing this in our hearts and minds, you know, a spiritual law that because that, we know the law of sin is unto a condemnation. It governed Israel, but it condemned them. You know, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. Here we have the Holy Spirit being poured out, you know, and it's the law of the spirit that's in our heart and minds that corrects us, that moves us, that says, oh, we may not want to do this, or you may want to let her know, or, you know, doing things that we normally would not do, um, you know, and causing us to be in class, to seek him, 
is to always seek, you know, an answer from him first and foremost and see it manifest out in class or with one-on-one -on -one with a minister or so forth. Jeremiah 31, 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will and make... This a day that comes is where you see this death, burial, and resurrection. You know, with that, and you see the top part says, and. So this day we... Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Which was the Old Testament, which is really the old covenant, these carnal ordinances read. Mm -hmm. Which my covenant they break, mm -hmm. although I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after this those days. Covenant. This is a new covenant. Read. After those days, saith Yahweh. Those I days will... being the death, burial, and resurrection, ascension, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Read. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. Wait, for no, I... Thank you. No, that's good. That's, that's the point I wanted to make, seeing how he's fulfilled it, and he's now writing his, his law of the spirit in our hearts and minds, which is like unto that most holy place where you have the Ark of the Covenant and that second table of stone. You know, where they where they just they they broke, you know, they broke the first one. The second table of stone points to this new covenant in our heart and in our mind spiritually. With those few words, I hope some something was said to Edify. And I pray I give praise to Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> Marie, you want to start or what? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, you you can. You can see I'm kind of lazy today. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> And you want me to start now? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can hear you, Doc. Yes, okay. patiently. Be patient. Thank you. Oh, okay. Please get the name of the, the transcript. Ooh. Natural man and also uh, what's it, what else is it called? Uh, what is it? Natural man. It's the same one we've been reading all week. Natural man and only medi Yashua only mediator. Yashua is the only mediator. So it has two different titles. Natural man, Yashua the only mediator. Okay, you ready to read? Okay. And the blood of Yashua the Messiah, you understand. And then he give it to you and he said he said to you that Yahshua said take uh 26 chapter of Matthew and 26 verse said take eat this is my body and this is my blood of the new is that right of the new covenant which is shed for the ransom of many is that right see and you're sitting down there, haven't been born, get the point, and you can't see off the end or no further than off the end of your nose and say, yeah, well, Jesus did say it. Jesus said for us to do it. And he didn't say no such a thing. You don't realize he was in another world or another age under the dispensation of the law. And he dwelled 
there with the Jew to whom the covenant was made. You see what I mean? And that has never been said to a Gentile. And they never have ate the Passover. And now for your information, to just to keep you from being deceived and fooled, you never have either nobody in here and that ain't all, you never will. Not like that. They're, they're just kidding you. And because you wasn't smart, you see, you're sitting up there, you know, and look, you tell on yourself too. Said, well, look here. It says this over here in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians in the 20th verse. Say, whosoever eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily eateth and drinketh destruction. It says damnation in that particular version of the Bible. Now listen at what I'm going to say. There you are down there and you're looking all around to see who does take it and who don't take it. See, and if you don't take it, somebody say, ah, you've been into something. Ah, you've been into something and you'd rather die and go to the lake rather than for somebody to think that you've been into something. And you're telling on your own self. See, because you're a natural man and you can't understand the things of the spirit. You can't understand grape juice and crackers or something other like that. See, you put it in your mouth and masticate it, chew it up, swallow it on down, and it goes down your throat and goes on down into the intestinal tract. See, it's digested and assimilated. Is that right? And the substance of it passes on through the abdominal cavity and on into the bloodstream. Is that right? It gives you strength in your physical body, but it don't do a thing for you otherwise. Ain't that right? Your conscience all condemned and you don't know what to do. It condemns you because you just don't understand spiritual things. And everybody comes along want to jump on me about it. Said, you folks down there, you don't believe in the communion. You all don't believe in water baptism. You all don't believe in washing feet. Now, Yahshua said, as often you understand, as you eat this bread, and if I being your master and, uh, and master wash your feet, say, look, fellow, I know what's in the Bible. Well, said Yahshua, wash the disciples' feet showing a stoop of humiliation and how humble he was. No, it wasn't a stoop of humiliation. Well, if he, it wasn't that, then what was it? It was fulfillment of the law and the prophecy. Moses brought Aaron, Nadab, and Abiah to the door of the tabernacle. Every time I, it's so nice until I can't hardly find it up here. It's right here and washed at the brazen labor and put on the garments and poured the holy anointing oil on them before they could officiate in the sanctuary. Now here, you got it right back here again. Here's the Passover. And just like this here, the blood, the water, the blood, the water, the blood, the water. Here's the Passover. He rises up from the table and he began to wash the disciples' feet. And look what he said to them. He said, you don't know what I'm doing. You think that they were all that stupid that they didn't know that he was washing their feet? And to show you that they wasn't all that stupid, Peter said, you never wash my feet. He didn't know he was washing feet evidently, didn't he? And so he said, if I don't wash your feet, you understand, you have no part with me. Listen, said, you don't know what I'm doing now. Is that what you got there? But you shall know hereafter. Now here comes the Apostle Paul. Said, husband, 
Love your wives as Messiah also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. And he's the word. He's the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh. And the word was made flesh. He's the word washing their feet. Get it now? You got to have your blood and your water. And when he did that, that night, it wasn't no good, no parts of none of that, because it had to come of effect after the new covenant is of effect after his death. See, and so he has got to resurrect from that and go on into heaven before this come up. Say it, but you shall know hereafter on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was, was come. It revealed to them that that's what he was doing. That's the washing of regeneration. Where Adam, uh, is that right? Washing their feet. Where, where, oh, where Adam degenerated, that one was the regenerator. Is that right? Washing their feet in the fulfillment of this back here. It was a type and a shadow, you understand? Now it's washed by the water, by the word. Now here you are sitting up here. You're washed by the water, by the word. You understand? Listen, Paul told Timothy, be instant in season and out of season. Exhort and rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine, you understand? And I charge you before Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah that you have in your King James version. Say, I charge you before Yahweh, is that right? And Yahshua the Messiah, preach the word. And look, folks, let me tell you something about that. See, when he did that, and the reason why he told Timothy to do it, I want you to see what happened. There were riots and mobs on the inside. You talking about somebody getting up in here, arguing or trying to dispute somebody. See, everywhere he preached the word, see, the real word, because they were natural people. See, they couldn't see through these things. They were carnal minded. You understand, it caused a riot. They had it right inside the building and out of the street too. I'm sorry, and out on the street too. See, you see the point? I think we're doing pretty well. That's right, we're doing pretty well to be able to preach around here. You see, with all the carnal mind, the intellectual so-called giants, theological giants, and they don't have no more fights and riots and disputes and debates and whatnot. You understand? Oh, now, okay. since I mentioned okay. that. Okay, I just wanted to, um, wait a moment. I just wanted to, to show this. He was talking about that they were doing physical, natural water. Um, that um, They were washing the feet of the apostles and she did a really nice job of showing us how, how as we're a, priest, a priesthood a, a kingship and a priesthood gathered together and that we help one another and I just wanted to show how the mystery of iniquity um, tries to get involved with it okay we're on page 51 or 70 and can you see it <laughs> now that's funny I would have told him right in the middle of the toes <laughs> <laughs> so it says hope Francis washes feet of Muslim female prisoner. So he's so he was saying it wasn't a, a, a stoop of humility. He wasn't trying to just be humble. Uh, what Yahshua was doing, Yahshua was fulfilling, and it was beautiful the way to, yeah, the way the ministers talked this morning about how it was going all the way back to the law and how Moses um, washed their feet uh, of the priest, and that. All of these things are pointing to uh, the fact that there's a there's a cleansing, there's a watching. And what's at the bottom of the foot? The soul. So 
So there's a cleansing going on, but he's trying to show this Pope, he's trying to show how humble he is, and he's trying to find the most humiliating, humble thing that he can do is that he is washing the feet of a Muslim female prisoner. But he's kissing it too. <laughs> kissing it. And apparently Dr. Kinley said, under this covenant, wash your own feet. You know, we don't, we're not going to be having classes where everybody takes off their shoes and Terry Welsh goes around cleaning people's feet. That's that's not why we're here. That was done, and that's older. Now, but by, by the preaching of the gospel is get causing your soul to be cleansed, your spiritual soul, and and you know they just, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's washing the feet of Muslim migrants, <laughs> and, says, and he says we are brothers. <laughs> And he's kissing him. That's what's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> they should put their toes right in his mouth. <laughs> we're on YouTube. We on YouTube. Well, I mean, we're laughing because it's funny, but this is what's actually going on. He is imitating the Messiah, and he's a joke. He is a joke. It, it is. It is laughing. It is. Yes, it is. Anybody who's offended, I'm trying to tell you, he's doing it, and he's fooling a lot of people with this nonsense. That's not what the that's not what the Messiah was doing. He comes around like a clown. He's kissing it and washing it, and ridiculous. He, he's supposed to be laughed at. It's, if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. So does anybody else have anything else to say about what we've heard? Did, um, Frank, have anything to say? It's been very quiet today. Is he here? Well, we're, um, matter of fact, we're just all, we're right where we left off now. So... <laughs> Uh, we kind of you backtrack, which is fine, you know, reviewing things. So um, I guess we can 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 continue on. I mean, because you got the, you already made the point when you uh, talked earlier that, uh, uh, and he's making the point uh, that all that was physical back there, and now it's about preaching the true gospel, and um, that's the washing of the water by the word, and that's one of the last things he talked about was. It's Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, uh, when it talks. Uh, that's what he was uh, showing with ben, be, be instant in season and out of season. Exhort and rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. And he told him to preach the word, preach the gospel. You understand? Because it says in uh, 15 and 3 of John, it says, uh, you are clean through the word that I preached unto you. And, and the words he speaks, their spirit and their life. So, uh, and then he was talking about how that, uh, what well, he was telling Timothy to do it. And there's so many carnal minded people and the natural man don't understand what we're saying. And we were natural men, but there's a way to be converted. You understand? We were wrong. Uh, and then now through the preaching of the truth this by this divine vision revelation from the Holy Spirit, Yahshua Messiah, he can wash and cleanse you up and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's uh, continue on there. You see with all the carnal mind and intellectual so-called giants, theological giants, and then don't have no more fight and riots and disputes and debates and whatnot. You understand? Now, since I mentioned that, I like to say something about Hebrew and Greek. Now, you see, when it, when we come in here and tell you this, I'll try to make it clear. Now, this is the true Hebrew name of the Father. I said it was not Jehovah. It's not Allah. It is not God, Bishop. Now, I said that. Now, somebody say, well, look. Do I just have to speak in Hebrew? Now, let me ask you a civil question. Does Yahweh have a right to raise up Moses out here in the wilderness at the burning bush? And do you think he's got sense enough to know his own name? And listen, when he told Moses, Moses was a Hebrew. And he spoke to Moses in Hebrew. Now, he did not speak to him in Greek. 
Now here comes along somebody he didn't speak to him in Aramaic. Either he spoke to him in Hebrew. Now that's why we say that's the true Hebrew name of the father. You get it now? Now you don't have no right to come along and say, well, this is not, that's Hebrew and I don't have to know Hebrew. Now here's what you're too dumb to realize. You're too dumb to realize that you're arguing with the creator. You're just too stupid for that. You understand, you get the point. Now that's what he said his name was. And look folks, they couldn't even pronounce his name. I ain't got time to go into all that, see, with, without the consonants and the vowels. Now look at this time now, for your information at this time now, you can go in bookstores almost anywhere and pick up the, and they'll tell you that that's his name. That's his true Hebrew name. Any dictionary, any encyclopedia, and all will tell you that that is it. Do you see what I mean? Well, now, why do you want to argue? You get the point? We told you this was a school. Well, why would you want to come down here and argue around with me about his name being Allah? Now, let me say this. Another person sat here. He said, well, what difference does it make? Let me ask you this. What difference would it make if someone called you out of your name? Would it make any difference with you? Your name is Bill Farley. Isn't that right? Or William Farley. If somebody come along and call you Bob Harris, do you see what I mean? We gonna go into that in a special lecture. We gonna go into that very thing in this special lecture. And I'm gonna show you that the reality of it. I will see without any, just get right down. Now your name, we gonna keep it, whether your name is, and we gonna tell you what we know about it. But we're not going to do that tonight. But you come back. You come on back. Now, don't come back here trying to argue with me. Get the point? But the natural man, he don't understand the things of the spirit. For they are foolishness unto him. Listen, neither can he know them. He can't know them. You come saying, can't you see? Can't you see? No, he don't see how he's gonna see. He's a blind man gonna see. You get the point? Oh, I'm sorry, how's a blind man gonna see? You get the point? If he seen, he wouldn't be arguing with me. And when you do see, that's the end of the argument. See, that's the way it is, Doc. And tell the story it like it is. All right, read on. Okay, I Neither. think that's... Uh... That's real simple, ain't it? He told him how that uh, he gave his name to Moses and he said, this is my name forever. Then somebody say, well, I don't have to use that Hebrew name. He said, I will show you how stupid you are. You're arguing with the creator. You understand the creator said his name. Yahweh said his name, Yahweh. <laughs> and you know, that's what the heavenly father said. And you're going to say, uh, no, nah, uh, I, I think it's okay to call him what I've been calling him all my life. You understand? They got, yeah, you right, you right. I know, I know people that say that. Mm -hmm, of you, course, and they right. say it doesn't make any difference, but uh, you're people. arguing with him. You're not arguing with us. You understand that, that they say they believe the Bible, but they don't realize the Bible has been translated and they took the names out. And he said, that's his name forever and memorial throughout all generations. That means it don't end. And like we say, it's a heavenly name, but he gave it to a Hebrew man and the Hebrew man did write it in a book and did tell it to the children of Israel and Pharaoh. And that's what delivered them out of the land of Egypt. But you saw that they, the devil was powerful enough to have them change it to Baal, which means Lord. And, you know, now you got Lord God, Jesus. Now you got Allah with the Muslims. And that was his whole point. If it ain't in the scriptures. Uh, that's not a revelation from Yahweh. Because the scriptures are revelations 
given to mankind from Yahweh. Uh, so now he says, why can't you see? Because you're blind. You only got no vision and revelation. And that's what he had in John, the third chapter, except you be born again. You can't see the kingdom. You don't see what he's talking about. And then, and we might not see it when we first hear it, but if you keep coming around, like he said, it'll be shown to you. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, Neither can he know that. Yeah. You see, he can't know. Now, here's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make somebody know something that there ain't no way in the world for you to make them know it. Don't you see? Don't you see? No, he don't see. Well, look like to me like he ought a uh, no. No, he don't know. If he did, as I said, that's the end of the argument. Read. Because they are spiritually discerned. See, now you have to have the Holy Spirit to reveal it. When he get the Holy Spirit, you understand, through the Holy Spirit, that's the end of the line. See, he's born. He's in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah. Let me give you another one. Now, look, if his name is Yahweh and you want to insist on calling him Jehovah or Allah, now look, and you're saying, what difference does it make? Then you tell me why it was that Yahweh and Joshua or Yahshua told the children of Israel and Moses that when they went across here and worship idols, they had idols down here in Egypt. And the Egyptians had Thai or Thibes and Isri and Isis. Is that right? When on up through here and went on up into Canaan land, you understand, they had Baal. Listen now at me. You're asking what difference does it make? See, whether we call him God or Jehovah or whatnot, you understand, out of his name. Well, if it's that, if it don't make no difference, why don't you call him Baal? Why don't you call him Moloch? If it don't make no difference, why don't you just call him Yahweh? If it don't make no difference, why don't you just call him Allah? If it don't make no difference, just might as well call him Baal. That's what they've done. That's what they've done. And the difference it made, they were sent away in captivity for worshiping idols. 70 years. And if you don't change your story you understand you're just you're going to bust before the judgment seat of Yahweh and Yahshua are you listening to me well let me carry this thing on through like it really is and show you what difference it makes see right where you are sitting in your seat you either have the Holy Spirit or else you don't have it you understand? You see what I'm saying? You just don't have it. Or you do have it. And if you do have it, as I told you before, and I'm doing nothing but repeating it, it does make a difference. You know where you come from. You're not searching to find out where you come from. You know. You know where you're going to. Now look, it's too far for me to go into all that detail, but I'll give it to you this way, real short. You're either sitting right in hell, right where you, right where you're sitting. I mean, now I'm not talking about after a while or in heaven. Somebody say, "Don't you know?" I don't believe that. Why? Sure, I know you don't believe it. See, cause you don't know that. Just like all them other things you don't know. That's right. See, I'm noted for telling you things you don't know. Is that right? That's no. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> he, he does noted for telling you things you don't know because you ain't never hear nobody talk like that, did you? Nope. No, they I say they, it don't make no difference what you call him. He said, well, then call him Yahweh then. You say you don't call it, make no difference, but then they're going to go ahead and do the same thing they always do. Mm -hmm. And then also, everybody, he said, you either got the Holy Spirit or you don't. 
Now, wouldn't you think the Holy Spirit would know what his name is? Definitely. John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things and bring all things back to your members. Earlier, he said the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. So, so the, you, you're either using the true name or you're not, and then you have a doctrine behind it. And seeing those physical things that they're doing out there, they got the wrong names, they got the wrong doctrine, and that sure can't be the Holy Spirit. And then he said, you're either got the Holy Spirit or you don't. And he said, you're either in hell or in heaven right now where you're sitting. Now, did you hear the church people talking like that? No, they think heaven's something going on later and hell somewhere where you're going to go later. And he's now going to explain that the, the Holy Spirit, he's in heaven and the satanic spirit, he's in hell. And he's going to talk about that. And that's what he's going to go into next there. And, 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 and he's going to talk about judgment and other things. So we might as well continue reading there. You want me to take over now, dear Daryl? Yeah, I appreciate it. Now, since let me get it to it real quick this way. Time is passing by and we don't have but a very few minutes. And unless you all get me straightened out with this doctrine, see, we won't get out of here. But I do want to take this discourse. So I'll have to hurry now. And that means then that you'll have to listen. Now pay attention to what I say. Them satanic spirits that were cast out of heaven, the angels that send, so says Peter and Jude now, they were incarnated in men. And listen, Yahshua sent the 12 in a sense out to cast out them satanic spirits that was in men. And this is what they were doing. See, some of them, some of them were foaming at the mouth, mentally deranged, right? Had all kinds of diseases and some of them were cutting themselves with stones and carrying on. Is that right? And he sent, he cast, they say he sent them out to cast them out. Now look, if the angels that sinned was cast down to hell, you see, and he's lodged right up in you, you see where hell is? See, now the angels that sinned, if he sent them out to cast the devil or satanic spirits out of men, then if they were cast down to hell, then you could see where hell is. See what I'm meant by what I said? Of course, it has a twofold meaning. It means grave too. But notwithstanding, see, this thing you got here is a grave. If your inner man is dead, Isaiah, Isaiah said hell, the hole in the ground is moved from beneath to meet you at your coming. You got the grave all hanging up here on you and your inner man is dead dead from the fall. Did you follow? No comments? Okay, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there, of course. Uh, you got uh, Isaiah where he says that 14, about nine, I think, or 12, something like that. Um, when it says, hell from beneath is the move to meet thee at thy coming. Now he's showing that. Now that's what we say in this, well, in this school, we, we didn't know these things before we come down to school. So really, it, we was like what it says in 1 Timothy 5 and 6. A woman is, that liveth in pleasure is dead while she's living. Now, how can you be dead while you're living? Well, you're dead because you don't know the creator as he really is and actually exists. You're dead because you're carnal minded, you're physical minded. You, you don't know anything of the spirit in reality and in truth. And that's what Romans 8 and 6 says. Be carnally minded is dead, uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, and in John 17 and 3, it says, this is life eternal, that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah whom thou hast sent. Now, and did we know that? No. no. So if we didn't have, that means you didn't have eternal life when you walked in here. Well, if you didn't have life, then you have death. You understand? So that means you were dead spiritually. 
demons were the ones that had been lying to you all your life. And that's why you had false concepts, theories, and opinions in your mind. Uh, and so uh, since you're dead inside uh, and there's demons there, then your body is a grave. Because don't you put dead people in a grave? Mm -hmm. You know, and don't they bury people? In yeah. <laughs> and Yahshua said in John, I mean, Matthew 8, 22, he said, let the dead bury the dead. Now, can physical dead bury physical dead? No. no, he's talking about that they were spiritually dead, burying their physical dead. He said, but follow me because he's life, see. So uh, he was talking about Second Peter, the second chapter too. the fourth verse says that uh, Yahweh spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into hell and put them in everlasting chains of darkness. To be reserved under judgment. Okay, uh, to be reserved under judgment. Now, so if he cast those angels out into hell and then those demons were in mankind and he was healing people of all manner of diseases and he was casting demons out of men, then that was showing where hell was. Now, you ever had anybody talk like that? See, no, there, there ain't no preacher talking like that. <laughs> so then he was going to Isaiah, why it says, so when you... When your inner man is dead, that means you don't know him and you're carnal minded. Uh, you don't have the Holy Spirit. He said that body is a grave. See, and, uh, it, and, and so when we came to class, we were dead and buried in false doctrine. And it took the Holy Spirit, Yahshua the Messiah, to preach the true gospel and the power of the gospel, seeing how Yahshua died, buried, resurrected, ascended, poured out the Holy Spirit through the scripture, through the law and the prophets, and how he fulfilled it, that he can raise you from the dead. See, it, it, right in your heart and mind. Cast them demons out, and you can be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. And the demons are cast out by the name of Yahshua and the preaching of the true gospel in the name of Yahshua. That's how powerful the name of Yahshua is. Mm -hmm. And so when, so when somebody want to be stubborn, say, I don't believe that name. I don't, that's got a de and they believe that because they, because they got demons in there. Won't let them see it. Right. You understand? But if they stick around, this teaching's powerful enough to, uh, yeah, change your heart and mind and uh, quicken that soul, raise you from the dead, right. sitting in your seat. And they'd say, what? I remember Dr. Gill saying, he heard Dr. Kinley say that. What's this man talking about? I got raised from the dead sitting in my seat. And he find out later. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, hopefully that helped a little bit there. See, now that's why I said you was in hell sitting right where you are. Now you got the song, Where Jesus Is. It's heaven there. And you say that he ascended into heaven. Is that right? And you said that he's in you as a quickening spirit. Well, that's where, that's right where heaven is. Now, listen, there's no pill. Now, we ain't gone go into that tonight. There ain't no pill can get you as, get you any higher, you see. No dose. But that's about the only way some of you are going to have a change of mind or a good imagination or a good hallucination, see? And when you're in that condition, you don't realize what you're doing. So it really don't make any difference. Then got the nerve to think that somebody intelligent wants to be bothered with you and your foolishness. I ain't got no time to be bothered with you with that kind of carrying on. See, I got to stand up and help save your soul. Now, you see what it is? Now, the natural man don't understand spiritual things, and neither can he know them. Why? Because they have to be revealed or discerned by the Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have nothing to discern with. Read on. Now, I want you to see what we're talking about. You remember that I told you a while ago that Paul can't tell me nothing. Peter can't tell me nothing. Isaiah can't tell me nothing. You understand? Ain't none of them can tell me nothing. See? And you can't tell me nothing. 
listen, I can't tell my own self something. See, that's what's wrong. See, I was telling myself things and I imagined I was something. Ha, boy, I was important. I used to get up and preach. And if you didn't pat me on the back and say, you sure did preach a wonderful sermon. Ha, <laughs> ha. <laughs> all stuck up in myself see but when I had when I really received the Holy Spirit I quit preaching I haven't preached no more since and when I learned what what it was all about then I quit I gave it up no more preaching see it has to be the Holy Spirit in there you understand what I mean all right read on but he that is spiritual now look, see, when I tell you about these cardinal ordinances that was under this, such as this and all this, when I tell you that that's all nailed to the cross and all it was pointing to was spiritual things. Now he that is spiritual, he that is spiritual, now the man is standing out there telling you and passing this water around. See, he's carnal. He's not talking about him, see, but he that is spiritual. What about it? Judges all things. Judges all things. Now, wait just a minute on that, you see. Now, what he just said there, and I could refer you to the sixth chapter of the first verse where Paul said this. Dear any of you, having a matter against another, stand before the law of the unjust and not before the sons of Yahweh. Is that right? Don't you know that the sons of Yahweh shall judge the world? Don't you know that? Seventh chapter of Matthew, the first verse. Jesus, Yahshua said, judge not for fear ye may be judged. You understand? But you see, he was talking to them people. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. Didn't have a thing to judge with. They were all in the same boat, you understand? They didn't have a thing. But now, when they got the Holy Spirit, you understand, then they got the judge in them. See now, he that is spiritual, that's got the Holy Spirit in him. Now, what about him? Judges all things. Everything you say. See, you can preach until you drop dead and have an effect in me none. Talking about what some honorable somebody said or the Pope said or some cardinal said, you haven't burdened me at all. You ain't even... You haven't even got me even stirred up. You see, get the point? You just might as well have been talking to yourself. That is what you were doing. You surely wasn't talking to me. You understand what I mean? Says, well, I know, but look where he is. He promoted on up. He's come up from a lay member to a priest and from a priest to a bishop and from a bishop to an archbishop and from an archbishop on up to a cardinal and from a cardinal and he just might make the grade of pope well it still don't make me no difference i don't care nothing about what the whole gang of them says see he ain't he ain't burdened me at all see i know what i'm talking about and i know what it is i'm capable and qualified through the holy spirit being in me judging everything anybody's saying that's reason why I say you ain't going to get up out there and say something to me. I know what's ahead. And listen, the reason why I said, one of the reasons why I said, sit still and keep your seat and keep your mouth shut and be quiet. Now, listen, what I'm saying to you, if you want, if you have a question and you want to, it answered, you understand? Just sit tight. Sit tight and think, you understand? And I'll pick you up and answer your question and save you all that embarrassment because I'm getting them vibrations, both negative and positive all the time, see? That's right. Read on, Doc. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Yet he himself, see, there ain't nobody bothering me, ain't nobody worrying me. You see what I'm talking about? Yet he himself is judged of no man. Read. For who have known the mind of Yahweh? Now, here's what I want to get you to see. See, now it's 
Now, listen, we're right down to where, where I'm trying to get you to see. Now, they say the church is ruled by tradition and scripture, you understand, and this and that and the other, you understand? And they haven't even got sense enough to come up and to point out the scripture to you. They're trying to tell you something that somebody else said, and they ain't got no scripture for it at all. And you remember I told you that the scripture was revealed in Moses, then wrote down, the prophets wrote down that Yahweh revealed to them in the scriptures, you understand? And you ain't even smart enough to go and take the scriptures for it, you see? Get the point? Now look, Yahweh, what he has in here, you understand? In his, in his about his own purpose, see? Now, who is it among his creatures that he has known his mind? That what? That he may teach him. Now, how in the world are you going to teach Yahweh? See, who's known his mind in the first place that he might be able to instruct him. Now, this is what we're telling you. Now, listen, folks. See, now Yahweh is in me, or the Holy Spirit is in me or in you. Now, if that be the case, now, who is it? Can some cardinal come along and instruct Yahweh? Now, this is what Yahweh had in mind from the beginning. See, you come out, we're the offspring. You come out by Yahshua, the Messiah, or the Elohim. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Now, you don't go back by no popes and no cardinals and by no apostles. You go back by and therefore, he is the only mediator and intercessor. You understand? Now, who has known the mind of Yahweh that he might instruct him? Don't you see why it is that I'm telling you all the time? Do you see what I mean? You're around trying to trouble me about something that somebody said. You get the point? You ain't nothing. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I tried to be nice and listen to your story. Now, Dr. Harris told you something this morning. Dr. Dennis did too. Now, he said the black man come with the creation of the earth. I said, that's a lie. Now, somebody said, well, in Africa, see, he come with a devil. Well, for your information, he's black too. He come from heaven. And I just got through telling you about that. And all them heavenly creatures, according to John's record of this, see, his countenance just illuminated the earth. And you never seen a black man that did that in your life. You never seen a white man do that. Do you see what I mean? And you never seen a yellow man do that. You see what I mean? And you never seen a red man. You haven't seen no earthly creature do that, you see? But the devil come along and just tell you any kind of stuff. See, just any kind of stuff. And got you out there just arguing around and will make you hurt somebody too. Keep you all locked up and in jail. Got his hands on somebody and you running around. See, make you shoot somebody. Make you even shoot your mom. The devil is a terrible fellow. That's right. It's nothing but the mafia and bunch of murderers, ignorant. No, nobody has known the mind of Yahweh that he might instruct him or tell him. You see what I mean? Have you got anything at all out of what I've said to you? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Well, I'll make this announcement while I'm on my feet. Now, I'm going to give a special lecture. I'm going to give it by the scriptures. And I'm going to take you on into that heavenly realm and tell you some things that you did not know. And look, I do mean about you personally and individually. Every one of you individually and you, your personality, right where you sit in your chair, it's for your individual and personality, personally. But I do want you to be here. Don't hang out. You understand? And you come on down and I will give it to you. To you. See? You understand? Now, if I'm announcing it in advance, then you come down and see what? See if I don't point it out to you in the scriptures. You get the point now? 
and I may write to you by your own name. Let us go home. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. So Hallelujah. we had a lot of stuff read there. Uh, maybe you ought to get the charts and then talk about this a little bit. Get uh, So where he was reading, uh, if you don't know, uh, that's what the name of the lecture was, the natural man, is 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, come down. And that's what he was reading all the way through there. And then he did a lot of explaining in between, of course. Uh, read, the, read that. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, yeah. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They're not in the spirit, see. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. And that's what he started talking about judging, because you know people say you can't judge nothing. He's saying, but he that's spiritual judgeth all things. That's the Holy Spirit judging. Mm -hmm. Yet he himself is judged of no man. You can't know carnal man can be judging the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? For who hath known the mind of Yahweh or the Messiah that he may instruct him, but we that have the mind of the Messiah. So that's what he was reading there or going over. And he talked about the judgment. And, you know, you got a lot of people go to Matthew, uh, Matthew 7 and 1 and read that. And then he did talk about uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 chapter. And he says, now the read, well, read Matthew 4. And this is be, this Matthew 7 and 1. This is before, Matthew. no, get, this is before the cross. And that's what you always have to see. When was something said? Mm -hmm. See, people read Matthew and think he's talking to us. Mm -hmm. Read that there. Matthew 7 and 1? Yeah. Oh, shucks, I lost it. Oh, here it is. Judge not that ye be not judged. That's right. So he says, judge not that you should be judged. Is he talking to us? No. No, he's talking to them. Uh, that's this is the Sermon on the Mount. He doesn't had he doesn't had Matthew five. That's all in that Matthew six, and then Matthew seven. All that. It's a, it was a long preaching he was preaching there, and uh, brother got about him fulfilling. That's in there. But judge not that you should be judged. He said, you know why he told them that? Because they were all sinners. They were all unrighteous. And nobody's judgment would be better than anybody else's judgment. You got an unrighteous man trying to judge another unrighteous man. You see that? Right. Okay. So he said, judge not that you should be judged. But see, when Yahshua Messiah died, we well, might as well get that. You get the charts, though. Hebrews 9.26. Uh, see, uh, at the end of the post, that's before he died, buried, resurrected. Now, here's Hebrews 9, 26. This For is... Uh, he often had suffered since the foundations of the world. That's God, right. Huh? Yeah, that's right. He suffered since the foundation of the world. Right. But, really. now, but now, once in the end of the world, had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And so when it says he appeared once in the end of the world, dispensation ages, that, that, that when he died on the cross, like you see on the chart there, and it's got the cross right here, that's one of the, that's the scripture he's got there is Hebrews 9, 26 on that line there. It says once at the, in, at, at the end of the world, end of the post diluvian age, that was the end of a world. See, uh, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's why he came, was to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Read. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judge. See, it's appointed man once to die. He would, Yahshua was only going to come once and die. After this, the judgment. See, after he dies, buries, resurrects, ascends, and pours out the Holy Spirit, you're in the judgment now. And the Holy Spirit, if he, he's in you, you're able to judge if somebody's lying and preaching false doctrine because you know the scriptures that the Holy Spirit's done writ, written there. Now, he also had 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. You might as well get that. 
Oh, and, uh, and then it said, the finish it off, it says, the Messiah is once offered to bear the sins of many, but unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. See, he appeared, to, he appeared as the Holy Spirit uh, without sin, and that's the salvation for your soul. Uh, read, uh, you got uh, First, First Corinthians, Corinthians 6, 6 1. Yeah. Dear any of you have any matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the sons. Mm -hmm. Do ye not know that the son shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you? So if the world is judged by you. So you see how the Holy Spirit's been poured out. Oh. That's why you're able to judge. Read on. Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels, how much more things that pertain to this life. Now, how are we judging angels? You understand that that's, that's in this age. It's because the Holy Spirit is able to judge that false doctrine that them demons is preaching out there in the world. The, you understand when they're out there lying to you, telling you got to do this, you got to do that. Jesus is the name of salvation. Merry Christmas and all kind of other stupid stuff that ain't in the Bible. You understand? And so it, that's what that's what's happening in this school. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're in the judgment and you're able to judge and discern whether something's correct or not. And that's one of some of the things he was talking about there. Uh, we've kind of run out of time, but uh, yeah, I tell you, boy. Uh, like we always say, that's why we read the transcript, because he said he had a vision of revelation. And when you examine the things that he taught, uh, you know that he did have it directly from the creator because you never heard no man speak like that mm -hmm. because it ain't no man. It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you are truly blessed if you see and understand these things. So uh, all praise go to Yahweh unto the son Yahshua. Hallelujah. Brethren, I have a few announcements before we end class. Uh, I would like to advise you that after Saturday's class, there will not be another class until Tuesday, um, the 29th of November. Also, Dr. Frank Lewis will no longer be facilitating the Saturday class. And we are most grateful to Yahshua for endowing Dr. Frank and Valerie Lewis for their diligence in the last two years in facilitating the Saturday classes. The future Saturday classes uh, until further notice will focus on the elementary chart and the principles of blood, water, spirit, and 40. Uh, with nothing further, we would like to thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 uh, p.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. And I would also like to thank the brethren for uh, remaining muted uh, until after the doxology. Now for the doxology, and let us bow our hearts and minds. And this is the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. God bless your day. Hallelujah. Yours too, dear. Hallelujah. hallelujah.